All stake, no sizzle. Here's your pro spec list. Number 10. I like your suit better, Dino. Extermination number one, second print, the first appearance of Ultra. Kid Cable. Tell us more. All right, so in this issue, we have the death of the Cable we have known and loved since New Mutants 87. Uh, he is actually exterminated by Kid Cable, and uh, Kid Cable has been a basically a staple in the Cable position in the uh, X-Men lineup all the way through House of X and got a very prominent place now with S.W.O.R.D. I see this one uh, as a book that I remember when nobody cared when it was cover price until they were no longer available. And then all of a sudden there were no none available and then everybody cared about it. And now I see this thing selling on the regular for 15 to 20 by itself. Um, definitely still a, a book that was not very highly ordered but is available in back issue bins. I've, I've actually personally pulled them from back issue bins and uh, I regret leaving any copies behind. So, uh, but uh, as a, you know, lover of the property, uh, obviously uh, I'm a big fan, but uh, I don't know about anybody else on this list. If they're, if they're with me on this one, ultra, tell me this, uh, you know, you, uh, I think more so than almost anyone in our community have been critical of a lot of the uh, hype around later printings. Why is extermination one second print different? What sets it apart? Because it, all right. So when we're dealing with a first appearance of a character on the cover of a second print that had not made it into print on a cover of let's say issue two, before issue one second prints released it's kind of like the the alignment happens when you have the, uh, certain things that warrant the book to be desirable versus just over it just being a later print much like captain marvel 17 second print mm, uh, yeah that one's i think a little bit of a, a little elevation above that because it's a completely like she didn't even really appear in the book you know she has kind of like a jessica cruz appearance in there with it's an arm but her cover on the on the 17 second print is a monster and yeah it's it's similar but not quite i think up there but he does have tons of content inside of the pages which makes it very worthwhile good stuff i appreciate it uh number nine Uh, right here we have uh, Captain Marvel uh, number eight. This is actually the second print cover, Nico. Um, this second print cover is actually uh, Star's first cover appearance, if I'm not mistaken. Plus it reveals her name on the front cover, which makes this uh, pick very enticing uh, for collectors. The, I, I guess that's the pro. The, the con of this is, is that the second print had some store variants attached to it. And uh, the retailer orders were around 20,000. But I think long term, 20,000 is still a really low number. Um, it's just that, uh, you know, compared to the first print being, you know, so low, um, this one will be passed by so many times. And I think that when you put that together with uh, the reveal star's name and the first cover appearance on top of the first appearance, you know, long term, it's a good pick. Yeah. I mean, I, I think sort of the, 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 the question mark that throws up over this book is the third print, right? Which is which is far less printed. A lot of retailers had this on the shelf when the third print came out. They didn't order it, um, and uh, it made that book a lot more rare. Um, it's striking in its own right with an all red cover. Um, that that said, uh, this book can be found for really cheap and should be grabbed if you guys come across it. I think it's a good pick. Why do you guys like Star? Uh, personally, I like Star for multiple reasons. Um, I think she could be a future, future um, character um, in the sense that even though I know um, people are, are smart subscribers know that Star series was postponed or canceled due to COVID, but she has become um, uh, she uh, has become a supervillain in sense since she has absorbed the reality stone and cut a, cut a deal with the Black Order to spare her life. And now, as of a few weeks ago, she's an official member of the new Thunderbolts team. So yeah, you know, she, she, they, they want to go places with her. Yeah, I mean, Marvel placed a huge premium on her in that, in that, in that title. She's sort of the, the big character in that. 
Um, I'd also say that you know Marvel's all in on Captain on Captain Marvel, and you know they need some sort of a uh, a counter weight to that character, if you will. And it feels like uh, Star might be that character. So um, I agree. Um, a good long term play um, for, and particularly this cover here, a relatively low buy in. Good stuff. Number eight. So this was my my pick, and uh, I can't believe it made the list. It's a DC book. Um, I, I didn't think it, it it had the had the power to do that, but wow. Okay. Um, so th this Young Justice number one, Young Justice number one had eight different covers, um, and this is the only cover that really features uh, Teen Lantern. She's in the regular cover, but that's more of a team cover. I think she gets more attention here, and there's um, arguably a little more artistry. Um, and this is her uh, Young Justice one is the first appearance of Teen Lantern, um, who's a Brazilian girl and was not given the ring by the Guardians of Oa. Um, she actually hacked into the uh, power uh, battery and built herself a gauntlet. Um, when... DC resumes regular publishing in March after uh, Future State. They re they're rebooting Green Lantern. And the Green Lanterns that are going to be featured in there are John Stewart, um, uh, Joe Mullen from Far Sector. And we've seen what the Far Sector number one book has done. Um, and this uh, Teen Lantern is, is, is the uh, third character. And matter of fact, She's featured on the Green Lantern one regular cover that's coming out in March, and I really wish I had time to uh, include it in here because it's it's really great. The cover has her um, sort of pointing her gauntlet and pointing the finger right in the chest of uh, one of the Guardians of Oa. Um, so um, she's definitely getting a lot of attention, um, Jeffrey. Um, Rush, I think, is the uh, or Jeffrey Thorne is the name of the author. Uh, he comes with a lot of uh, credentials. Um, so, uh, so yeah, Teen Lanterns going going to uh, is is going to be featured there. Um, and then, if you also look further down the line, you know, DC is really heavy into the young adult market. So, um, you know, she's perfect match for that as she's, I think, 11 years old. Um, and, you know, who knows with the Green Lantern HBO Max series, haven't heard any news about that lately, but, um, you know, the, the possibilities are endless. But uh, this cover is probably more rare than the Far Sector uh, uh, number one or the Far Sector number one variant because retailers had to choose between eight different covers. Mm. Good stuff, Steve. Uh, Carter, am I correct that uh, Young Justice number one is a, a book you've been pulling? I, I think I remember seeing it in one of your recent haul videos. Yeah, I remember I picked up the second print and this cover here in particular, I haven't seen it. And I've I've been to quite a few stores and I have yet to see that cover. Good stuff. Mm. Wow. Number seven. Hmm. Mark Spector, Moon Knight, number 35. And uh, here we have Mark Spector's brother taking the mantle of the Shadow Knight. And uh, this was a, a Sleepy pick. And I, I see Sleepy's vision because what we have here is a character like Moon Knight. Uh, he's got a short supply of really good... I, I guess you could say villainry uh, in his books that basically, I, I guess, live long enough to, <laughs> to, to actually tell a good story. So we have a we have an opportunity here uh, with the brother of Moon Knight taking up the mantle of a villain for some good storytelling. And I don't know if Sleepy's basing this off of anything else because I know he likes to he likes to dig in and read. So I don't know if there's any other motives behind his specking on this, 
but I do think it's a it's a good pick as far as looking for ways to generate storylines around Moon Knight that could possibly transfer to other forms of media. Yeah, when Sleepy tells me about things, I listen. Every time I've not listened, I've lost money. Um, good stuff, Ultra. I appreciate it. Number six. So right here we have uh, Edge of Spider-Verse 2, third print. When I think of the biggest modern keys, um, Edge of Spider-Verse 2 comes to mind. Um at the very, very, very top of the list. This book right now isn't necessarily cheap. It's at 100 raw, roughly. Wow. Um, I think you're going to look back on this book uh, at some point in the future at 100 raw and think, I, why didn't I grab that? Um, you know, there's been a number of late printings of this book. Um, uh, this one is particularly attractive because uh, they changed the cover, right? It's a design variant. Um, with Spider Gwen um, featured, um, while the others are just variations in color of the original printing. Um, you know, there's probably somewhere between ten and twelve thousand of these estimated floating around out there, which by all means is relatively small for a character this big. Um, we know we're getting Edge of Spider Verse two, uh, um, and uh, into Spider Verse two coming out. Um, in 2022, uh, she'll be featured in that movie as well. Um, hard to think of a bigger book and a bigger opportunity than this book right now at the current price. Dino, I think uh, you and I both remember uh, many, many times seeing this book in the wild and, and leaving it behind. Yep. Um, for a long time, it was ignored. Uh, is Was this one of the books that was high on uh, your voting list? Yeah, it was. Um, it was funny because I remember back in the day, this was, if not Ultra might remember this too, this was like the very first CBSI Grading Club book that we started where we would all like chip in and just do books and like, hey, this everybody wants a piece of this one. I think I sold my 98 for like 20 bucks after I couldn't give it away. Like no one cared about this book for eons and eons. And I just, dude, I just turned it for 20. So it was some young kid too. He was like 12, 13 years old. Like, oh, that's a cool book. I can get my first slab. So I gave this get a first slab probably a thousand dollar book lately so it's gonna be good times <laughs> and this this really was the way this one was treated for so long it was left on shelves i remember picking one up and you know just sitting on it for a while so i i'm glad to see this one's actually getting the love it deserves and it, yeah it's 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 a crazy situation to see that what a difference a couple of days make number five. Oh, it's my girlfriend it is. <laughs> uh, here we have a uh, wow. We have another uh, Captain Marvel number eight uh, stars first appearance. Star um, her, I guess you could say, is an alter ego of actually Ripley Ryan. Her first appearance you can find in Captain Marvel number one, by the way. But uh, side note, when I think about this book, this one in twenty five um, by Shauna Zosky, um, I think summer of two thousand nineteen. I think. San Diego Comic-Con, Black Widow, Red Guardian, Taskmaster confirmed. I think D23, Kamala Khan confirmed. And I also think of Captain Marvel number 8, 1 in 25, first appearance of Star, which also brings you back to this cover. Beautiful, beautiful color. Uh, I think retailers' orders, uh, the orders by retailers were around 33K. You got a 1 in 25. You just you figure there's about 1,200, maybe 1,300 out there. Um, I remember in my pre-orders, my retailer telling me there were allocations and damages for this book, especially on the back cover. Um, this is a good pick. I, I like this book long term, especially for Star. Yeah, I want to so say this. Buy on the dip. This book is on what we call right now a dip. And if you are specking on Star, absolutely time to buy. Yeah, and I want to double down on, uh, which I, I wasn't aware that there were um, damages, but... I wish I was. Uh, try and fail on, uh, and I, you know, look, I, I don't buy ratios off of eBay, mm -hmm. but I did uh, a couple of different times with zero nine eight contenders. Um, so that finally uh, is starting to put the dots together for me. I, I didn't appreciate that, but uh, super cool book. One that I have uh, tried my best to find a high grade copy of and uh, not done so well. 
And you know, you know, there uh, just real quick. Um, I mean, there's only a. I mean, it's been out for almost two years and year and a half, two years. And there's only what 10, 11 copies on on the census of nine eight, thirty of nine six. So you know, if you find this book, especially like Ultra says, it's in a dip, it's in a law. Grab it. Yeah, no, super cool book. Uh, smart play, guys. Number four. Yes. Where's our so, buddy Andy? Andy, I'll <laughs> fill in for Andy, and and I'm going to give a shout out to Newbie Comics because he's another one of my one of my partners on this book. I actually, I love this book more than X Men 266 for a couple of reasons. For one, Art Adams is doing the cover art, and for two, it came out two weeks before X Men 266. For three, he's on 12 pages in multiple panels, speaking part. Wait a second, you mean it's not a cameo? Yeah, nah, this is a full in every sense of the term. This is a full. Uh, you know, and and you, look, and 266 garners the right to claim the first Gambit cover, okay? Right. No matter what, first Gambit in continuity, first Gambit cover goes to 266. It's always going to make that book good. However, this book has more potential upside because in 100 years from now, when we're all gone, when, when there's the, the plethora of people who used to argue over which was the first appearance, this one is still going to be predating 266 by two weeks, giving it every everybody who's looking at it going, oh, well, that one's two weeks older, and he came first. Yeah. It's a tough 9-8. Absolutely. Uh, 266 has a much higher print run. Yeah, the square, the square bounding on this one makes it really, really tough and high grade. And like, and, and and I think the recommendation for this book was specifically the newsstand, right? So I, I believe this was a newsstand recommendation, which makes it even fucking harder because these fuckers got killed in those spinner racks, man. They got yeah. absolutely destroyed. But they yeah. are out there. I yeah. do see this book when I when I go, and it's because there's a lot of people who know about it and and like to have it as far as inventory. But it doesn't sell to anybody unless they're a hardcore X Men collector, or they yeah. like the Days Future Past or Days Future Present storyline. Yeah, yeah I, I love it. Uh, super smart play, and I'm somebody who is uh, deep in X Men books from now until I see them on the silver screen. So this Good. is the type of book that uh, the normies haven't caught on to yet. I guess you can say that because, again, if you ask the general masses of people what's Gambit's first appearance, they're going to tell you Uncanny X Men 266. Mm -hmm. And then if, and, you, and, if you hit them with this thing coming out two weeks before that, it generally blows their mind. Well, and then they say, the, the, they'll be like, well, that's only a cameo because they've never opened the book. Well, the problem is, is that, you know, there's one image that floats around the internet about his appearance in this book. It's from distance and it's in color, but that's incorrect. There are several other frames of him in this book, largely in the shadows, um, but clear appearances of the character throughout this throughout this issue. Um, it's really that sort of late frame that gets shown of him sort of standing in a group of other characters um, rather than all the other appearances throughout this issue, um, which are super relevant. Right, so this that this is a first appearance. I don't think it can be can be argued. Does he does he have dialogue in this issue? I'm, I, yes. I, I haven't read it. Okay. Yes. Cool. Yeah. No, it's it's uh, like the first appearance. It, yeah, it's a first appearance. It's a first full appearance. It's a cool book. He's just not on the cover, so it doesn't slab well. Uh, exactly. But with the square bound and as everybody else has indicated, the opportunity for growth, I, I think it's here. Um, plus, it's got a much smaller census. Uncanny X-Men 266 has one of the largest census of any book, period. Yep. Number three. All right, so we have uh, this uh, magnificent Miss Marvel, uh, number 11, second print. Uh, this is the uh, first full appearance of Storm Ranger. And for those who do not know who Storm Ranger is, um, she is like a Venom-like villain uh that could be used for the mcu this is what i am specking on um we all know that 
um, Marvel and Sony, sometimes they have, uh, you know, a rocky marriage. But um, if Marvel or Sony ever separated, then they have this this character, this really cool character that they can use as their Venom. Um, so this book, uh, this character is um, first shows up in Magnificent Miss Marvel five. Uh, there's a second print, and it plays like Secret Wars 8, um, if you see in the background here. Um, so she's not... Uh, the character is... That villain is not sentient, doesn't show any signs of life in that book, but she does bond with uh, Kamala Khan. So you have that in 5, then you have the connecting covers in 6, 7, and, uh, six, seven, and 8. So I like this book a lot. Uh, we the community is really really heavy on uh, first full appearances right now. Um, right. This is what I would expect. She's all throughout the book. Um, so yeah, I I think uh, people are looking for villains and uh, support characters for the Disney Plus show for Kamala Khan, and this is a good one. It's on the dip. You can get it for fifteen bucks. There's only a thousand. 889 copies ordered for this book. Yeah, th I think this fill is a is a home run. Um, you know, Miss Marvel is a priority character for Marvel, not only for the comics but for the films. She needs a badass villain. What I like about this this uh, Storm Ranger character is that while she's sort of inspired by Venom, she was never tied to that character. So I believe. Marvel owns the rights without any issues there, right? There's sort of symbiote characteristics that were never explicitly sort of um, connected to that character. So I think she's independent. And uh, I think this book is an absolute home run because uh, she needs a badass villain, and this, and this is it. Let's jump right into number two. So here we see Magnificent Miss Marvel 10, second print. She's on the cover. This is the last panel of that book. People have this labeled as the first appearance. Um, the market hasn't quite decided. Since it is playing like the first appearance of Venom, um, where you have Secret Wars 8, then you have ASM 299 and ASM 300. So this... The panels of this book mirrors, in a way, and pays homage to ASM 299. You do have the first cover appearance of her, which is quite sexy. That's and it's a <laughs> it's a good image of her, um, because Kamala's like, "What? My suit's alive. My nano suit is alive." You know, so. Um, um, I have it as a first cameo appearance. The market hasn't decided. Like Ben said, uh, the ceiling is, is really, really high for this character. And uh, in a separate discussion, Ben was telling me that she showed up in the in the last Miss Marvel uh, issue. Is that right, Ben? Yeah, so she, she showed up in Miss Marvel 17 at the very last page of that. And she's featured prominently in issue 18, which is coming out either like this week or next week or something like coming out soon. Cool. Yeah, so and guys, for my money, tell me if, if uh, my analysis is correct. Marvel's doubled down, tripled down on Kamala Khan, uh, the first young new Marvel hero to get a television series. We're all acutely aware of that. There's a very limited number of floppy issues that have been published uh, featuring her, and uh, there are only a handful of uh, characters of importance in those books. Uh, the number one villain, Storm Ranger, right? I would agree, George. I mean, I, sh I, I think this character is going to be central to Kamala. I think she's going to play a bigger role than Marvel. You know, they originally had her with an old, her own series in Empire, but I think because Empire was so terrible and so delayed from COVID that they shelved that. But they've got big, big, big plans for Storm Ranger. 
and and it's very difficult to tell is it 10 or 11 right this is her first cover and her first cameo covering cameo that recipe historically has led to big books right versus cameo with no cover um so it's either 10 second or 11 second it's going to be close um but this is a really good play for the buy-in right now for 10 or 15 bucks you should be grabbing this book and not thinking twice about it in my opinion and we think it's a safe bet that uh, there'll be multiple seasons of uh, ms marvel on disney plus yeah, th- yeah unlike some of the other disney plus shows ms marvel is really set up to have multiple seasons right one division very clearly single season captain wonder soldier potentially multiple seasons but 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 ms marvel i think we're going to see several seasons of that show given what they can do with it so a high probability that we'll see storm ranger in live action probably not in season one i would bet a hundred percent not in season one season two much higher probability yeah uh i like it guys real good stuff All right, so so this is my pick this week. Listen, when I think about the biggest book in sort of the modern era right now, it is Ultimate Fallout 4, right, without question. Um, You know, the first print, the 125, those books are running like crazy. Um, The second print, which is really cool because you get to see Miles' face exposed. Yeah. Uh, it was ordered roughly in the neighborhood of sort of 15,000, let's say, by retailers. Um, I think it has massive potential given the buy-in right now. It's a sub-$100 book um, that I, I, I think we'll look back on in two or three years and thinking, God, why didn't I buy several of those? Um, um, a really attractive cover um, for arguably the biggest character of the modern age um an absolute layup and people are so hyper focused on the first print in the one in 25 they're kind of forgetting about these but what people forget is that prior to miles mania which kicked off in the summer in 98 this book was selling for about 400 which was neck and neck um with the first print um so i think a really really attractive book to be buying right now if you're looking for for huge roi i'm not sure if anybody else feels the same way but i feel I you know I feel, bullish I feel, on, a, on, on an opportunity sorry ben i mean to cut you out brother i feel exactly uh where you're at too and i can actually um approve that uh sales number and uh, pump it up a little higher i did see confirmed sales during miles mania um, it, before last summer, into last summer, up in the five hundred dollar range. Um, I know because I invested in this book at the time, and unfortunately, I only have one copy left, which I'm saving. But I mean, you know, it also goes to add, you know, like Ben said, you know, we get to see his face for the first time, and a lot of people when they get into the second print for this particular book, they they start gravitating towards that Pacelli th- uh, second print variant automatically assuming it's it's more rare when in actuality it's it's there's two to two and a half times more of that we'll say two times more than that book a little over that than this bagley cover uh, because of a promo that diamond was running uh, there was uh reorders in that book in november and december and it brought to the tune nico of about thirty seven thousand on that uh, second print variant by Pacelli and like Ben said, around fifteen, just under fifteen thousand on this book. So down the line, this book is going to be much more harder to come by, and it's been sitting in a seventy-five to one hundred dollar raw law for for near mints for like a good amount of months now. There was a little bit of spike, but I mean, it just keeps simmering there, and it's not really moving. And I think right now, strike while the iron's hot, and it's sizzling. This is the book. Okay, guys, now help me uh, understand this. So the promotion was one for one, right, with the Pacelli. For every copy of the Bagley book you ordered, they gave you a copy of the Pacelli? Mm-hmm. That's, that's accurate? Th- that, that's from my recollection. That is correct. 
And then that was on top of the separate orders that were made of the Pacelli. Correct. That's correct, correct, which I believe were also given an extra copy. I mean, a lot of those Pacellis were given away on free comic book day. I've got uh, um, I've got copies of that with with, with um, stores stamping their logo on it uh, to sort of give away. So that Pacelli, and I'm not knocking that book. I think it's beautiful and brilliant. Yeah, I mean, it's frankly the best cover. Yeah, but it, it's just it's there's just far more of them floating around than a bit of this particular cover, right? So that that Pacelli is great. And I'm not anybody who has it. Hold on to it. It's a good book. Yes. This one is just harder to come by. So I, I think uh, real quick because Richie even asked me. He's like, "What was that one a uh, uh, little bit of news that I I'd, I'd seen that I shared with you guys?" Um, I think there is a serious push for Miles to be included in the live action Spider Man product that we may be causing it to be written that way by the demand for this book. I, I just, I, I see us in the market controlling what they're going to be, then be choosing to be put into these live action films for us because they see the market in response to what the consumers want. And, and Miles is definitely a book that everybody is going to want to probably have if he shows up live action it's the, the ship's going to sail on on this book the other second print and they're going to be just as hard to come by as the regular first print and then the the, the variant's going to be in the stratosphere yeah, yeah i would not be surprised to see uh, andrew garfield die in spider-man 3 and us get a little glimpse of a, a young miles morales by the end of that film or Toby Maguire, Spider-Man, die at the end of that film and us get just a little tease um, into the multiverse of Spider-Man. Uh, ben, parting thought? Yeah, I mean, I would just say that I think as we think about sort of generational characters, Miles is as big as it gets, um, as big as it gets, with a comfortable margin. And if this is the kind of book you look back on in a couple of years, thinking, why didn't I grab a couple more of those? So I would say where these are right now, sub 100, snatch these up, and I think you'll be really happy that you did. Great list, guys. Good stuff.